Welcome to our leisure show here on Uxbridge FM and we're talking travel today. Our guest is Emma Vipon from Travel Counsellors and you're an independent travel consultant based in Ickenham. Hi Emma. Hello. Now we're going to hear all about your services in a moment I think but first off I know you've travelled fairly extensively around the world. Give us just a flavour of some of the places you've managed to travel to. Uh, well, I've worked out that I've probably travelled to about 30 different countries. Right. The majority of which were before I had my two children. <laughs> but um, I've done all sorts of different holidays, trekking holidays, scuba diving, skiing. I've been interrailing around Europe, um, self-drive and tours um, to um, yeah, most countries, as I say. But I've got a couple of favourites. Yeah. Um, I'd say South America was amazing. I went to um, Peru, Bolivia and Ecuador uh, as part of a tour group. Um, but it was quite a memorable trip um, for good and bad reasons. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, firstly, um, when I arrived, I was told that my luggage hadn't arrived with me. Considering I was doing a trekking holiday to Machu Picchu, this wasn't good. No. Um, but luckily I'd taken the advice of a friend of mine and worn, well, worn my walking boots on the plane, so at least I had those with me. Um, but we arrived in La Paz in Bolivia on a Sunday and I had no clothes <laughs> apart from what I stood up in. And the only um, shops, or I say shops, um, only things available were th from the local market were knitted ponchos made of our alpaca so <laughs> i had to wear my other house boxer shorts for two days nice. uh, and then we set off um towards the border with peru uh, on a on a coach and then the tour guide received a phone call from the airport to say they'd located my luggage so we quickly jumped off the bus and head straight to the airport to pick up the luggage while the rest of the group were heading towards the border border with peru um, so it was a race against time and i ended up in two different taxis and a local bus with goats on board <laughs> to try and catch up with the group because he was obviously responsible for them and um, we had to try and reach them before they got to the border. Anyway, so uh, long story short, we got there in time. They were just having lunch. Um, so that, that worked out fine in the end. Um, and then we spent uh, the next week or so, um, we went in Peru, we went to the floating Uros Islands and stayed with a the family there. Oh, in, lovely. In the, um, unfortunately, my other half was ill, so he was upstairs in bed. Okay. And I was sat downstairs in this tiny little room with an open fire with a family, and I didn't speak any Spanish, and they spoke <laughs> no English. <laughs> so I was cursing him up there. Um, so we did that, and then we um, embarked on the Inca Trail. So that was a three-day hike up to Machu Picchu, which was amazing. Um, and, the, you know, the, the people that carry all your... Um, kit up there are just unbelievable they're running past you in flip-flops with with tents and you just carry your own little day bag yeah and they're uh by the time you get there for lunch they've put up an, an entire tent and they're cooking you um soup and, and then they pack it up and run ahead and then they get your um tent ready for for the night um so that's amazing so we did all that and that was fine and then um the following Day it was our last night in Quito, so we planned a big night out. But unfortunately, I passed out, hit my head on the toilet sink, and ended up in a private hospital oh. in a neck brace. And uh, so the others all came to visit me that evening. They were planning on a big night out. And there's me and my other half, who'd been tucked in the bed next to me, in bed by 8 o'clock. So they all went out. But um, I think we had the upper hand the next morning when they were really feeling... Because yeah. we were all flying off to um, Ecuador the next day. It was touch and go whether I'd get the plane. Mm. Um, so it worked out all right in the end. And then we flew off to the Galapagos and did a little sail around there for a few days. Nice. And flew home. So that was one of my favourite holidays, I'd say, even though quite a bit of it went wrong. Mm. It, yeah, it was definitely Good memories. memorable. Yeah. And I'd say um, another favourite destination of mine would be Africa because one of my um, best friends was working for an NGO on the island of Pemba just off of uh, Tanzania. Mm. So I flew out to visit her. Um, I did actually miss my plane and had to vi fly via Nairobi. Okay. Anyway, we found each other in a youth hostel in Dar es Salaam. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we went on a safari, which was 
uh, I'd say it wasn't, it was quite rough. <laughs> we were in tents um, and they said to us, basically, if you hear any noises outside, it could be bush pigs. Make sure you've got your um, food, you know, any food you've, you've got hidden away. Yeah. And then um, the next night they said, oh, if we, if we hear anything, would it be bush pigs? And they said it's more likely to, to be something a bit more wild than that. So if you need the toilet, make sure you go in pairs. So we just sat there <laughs> all night in our tent bursting for the toilet. Um, so that was an experience. And then we went over to the island of Pemba where she was um, um, doing the volunteer work. And uh, there was no room on the local bus. So basically we sat on the roof with our backpacks and every time a tree came, we ducked. Okay. <laughs> and then when we got to the uh, the camp, which is on the beach, the, sh- the t- um, shower facilities consisted of a sarong wrapped around a tree and a well with a bucket. And all the food was cooked by the volunteers and the ha- everything had sand in it. Nice. <laughs> but they were basically um, trying to stop dynamite fishing off the coast of um, Africa. So we used to go out on the boat, do some scuba diving. So that was amazing. But the trouble is um, on the sand, you have these little creatures called jiggers, which can bury into your feet. Oh. Uh, so uh, on one occasion, there's only a, a couple of places in Pemba where you can go for a drink because it's quite heavily regulated out there. So we were in one of these um, s- sort of shacks. And I looked at my foot and I thought, mm, what's that on my toe? <laughs> and my friend said, I think you've got a jigger in your foot. A jigger. And, yeah, and they can lay an egg sac in your foot. And if you don't get the whole egg sac out, if it bursts, then, the, the, you know, that it can spread. So one of the locals came over, I didn't say a word, picked up a, a matchstick, sharpened the end and, and dug this thing <laughs> out of my foot and walked off. <laughs> nice. So that was, yeah, that was another experience. But that, yeah, then... That was another one of my favourite trips. Mm. So um, obviously a fair amount of travel experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, your your passion for travel led you into working with travel counsellors. Yeah. So just explain how travel counsellors operate. Is it a franchise model? Is it UK or worldwide? Um, yes, it is a franchise. Um, it's global. So um, they've got offices in Australia, um, Dubai, the Netherlands, the UK, Ireland, UAE. Um, but there's head offices in Manchester where there's 400 support staff who work there. Oh, right. um, so they've got the IT department, marketing department, um, business development department. So you are really well supported as a franchisee. Um, they're completely independent so we although we can book um, third party retail supply packages we are also um, can book bespoke packages according to what our customers um, require. Yeah. And that's really how travel counsellors differ from regular high street travel agents, I guess. Yeah. And we've got similarities with some of the independent high street um, tour operators in as far as we can put together packages um, and we're not tied in. Um, but, but we can also... Put, as I say, put out together retail packages so I could book a cruise or I could book a ski package or a Lapland package, mm. a golf break or you know, anything like that. Um, but the difference would be that we are available more readily. So after the high street shops have closed, you know, eight o'clock at night on a Friday, if someone wanted to call and speak through some ideas they've got, then they could they can get in touch with us. Evenings you're fine. and weekends. You're fine with that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, if it was the middle of the night and someone wanted to ring up and book a holiday, I, I might not answer the phone. But no. um, if it was, uh, I had customers travelling abroad and something happened, then um, if they couldn't get a hold of me, we have a 24-hour duty office um, in Manchester, and they're there to one um, take phone calls from anybody that, that needs help, and they'll sort it out for them in the event that they can't get a hold of me. And they're also there to monitor um, world travel events, so it might be if there was a riot or a strike or some sort of weather um, storm coming in, then they would let us know which clients we had and who might be affected in those areas so that we could try and um, sort them out before. That's great. So you've got the um, independence of and personal service of going to you direct, but also the backup of this um, yeah. Manchester And centre. because there are 1,900 of us worldwide, we're like one big family. So if there's something that I don't know and uh, some place that I've not been to, then there's always someone there that, that to help up, you know, to help me that knows what they're talking about. Mm. And you just, you briefly ran through the different kinds of travel or holidays that you can book, but is it anything? So you can go skiing or golf or 
Yeah, we can book even um, cottages in the UK. We can book ferries. We can book. Um, if I was doing an independent package, then we'd, I'd, we've got thousands of hotel suppliers. Some of them are direct contract to us, where we get extra bonuses. You might get a free room upgrade, or you might get free dinner. Um, so basically, I'd put the flights together with the accommodation, and then I can add excursions, um, a car hire ferries anything you want i think the m difference with us and other um, maybe high street um tour operators is that it's more of a personal service so yeah. you always speak to me you wouldn't speak to go in and speak to someone different and i'd get to know i get to know you what you like what you don't like and maybe if you've got kids what they like and maybe you know how old they are when their birthdays are when your wedding anniversary is and um then I'd then maybe send you a card on your birthday and I'd deliver your tickets. Um, maybe you, I'd give you a little gift. I'd ring the hotel up to make sure they look after you while you're away. Um, so, and, you know, get in touch to make sure you're enjoying your holiday. Um, because that's important because our business, travel councillors don't advertise. So our business is um, grows through referrals yeah. and repeat business. So it's in my interest to make sure my customers have the holiday that's, that suits them. Uh, and we also work with um, destination management companies in certain countries um, who are on the ground and best placed to know what's available in that area. So if I tell them my customer's interested in cooking, then they'd be able to, um, you know, maybe put together a package that would suit them. Mm -hmm. um, and we also make sure that everyone we work with is... Um, you know, sustainable, and we try and work with local communities to to put back into the local area. And it's, is there a, a type of customer that you're targeting? I'd say um, someone who wants someone to help them, wants you know, needs some knowledge, and wants to take the hassle out of putting the package together, and they um, they want to ensure that it's completely financially protected um because travel councillors have um, a, a trust where um, all the customers money is kept until they return from their holiday so if something did happen to travel councillors as a company um they would always get their money back oh right um <clears throat> so people that want the reassurance of um yeah financial protection um also people we you generally um three star and above i mean we can but retail packages that you know may incorporate it depends if someone wants to do a, in, a trek or something that they might be staying in a, a local lodge so it's yeah. all it's tailor-made to the individual um but i would say is that we don't our ethos isn't to just try and price match an internet price because it's just not the same sort of service you can't yeah. get the same service from the internet as you would from us you're adding a lot more uh, value compared that, to just price matching exactly mm. fantastic so um let's have a look i guess um you've done protection and you've explained how the the trust system works and that's a hundred percent covered yes money is a hundred percent covered it sounds like the perfect way to book a travel package especially after the uh, the recent collapse of like thomas cook and whatever yeah definitely so um to get in contact with you um, what's the various ways we can get in contact? Well, you can phone me on, yeah. Yeah, on 01895 530033 or you can send me an email. Yeah. Um, I've also got a web page. And that is travelcouncillors.co.uk forward slash emma.vipon. Yeah, and I have a Facebook business page. Cool. And... Um, while we're on the uh, web page here, I'll just scroll down because it's quite interesting uh, bits and bobs on here, some some deals, and then also some bits and bobs of blogs as well. Your yeah. travel blogs, where you've been recently? <laughs> they were my um, <laughs> well, since I've had the children, we have we have been abroad. We've been to Canada and we've been uh, did a road trip to France. But this is my family holiday in Scotland. It sounds great. Last year, yeah, we had amazing weather because it was Easter. So when we went to Sky in Easter, I was a bit, mm, yeah. what's the weather going to be like? But it was beautiful that's worth a read then through there yeah you don't have to go far afield to get amazing scenery some nice chocolate it seems chocolate <laughs> stories yeah <laughs> uh, yeah and on there we have like our destination guides and under the explore section well if you if you're stuck for ideas on where to go then there's some um inspirational blogs on there oh yes so 
I suppose now is the sort of time people are booking holidays, isn't it? I mean, yesterday was supposed to be the uh, Blue, Monday, Blue Monday, the most depressing day of the year. Yeah. So <laughs> that apparently came about because a travel company commissioned a researcher to find when was the most likely time people would book holidays. Yeah. There was this big formula he came up with, which made no sense whatsoever. Because <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah, it's been nicknamed ever since as Blue Monday. Yeah, January is the peak season because after Christmas, everyone's a bit depressed, everything's over, and they're looking forward to their next adventure. And also, I think this this weekend in um, in January, is when people start getting paid. Yes, yes. <laughs> the other thing you were chatting about before we came on, on here was um, your app, which sounded quite interesting because I've been on group holidays before, and I've been the person who everybody has to pay and your credit card gets hit for a fair amount of money in the end, and there's yeah. always someone that delays, oh, I haven't got the money right now, can I pay you later? And you're like, oh, if you must. But you've got a special app, haven't you? And a, <laughs> well, it's an account, yeah. An account. It's a, travel councils have spent a lot of money on their technology, yeah. uh, and we have a TC, my TC account, which you can download as an app on your phone, or you can um, access it via a computer. And basically, um, all your quotes, uh, once you've downloaded it, all your quotes will be sent to the app, uh, either on your phone or your um, laptop, and then you can request to book, then you can pay via the app, um, you can pay the deposit, and then if you wanted, you can even pay in instalments if you wanted to have right. less to pay at the end. Um, and then once you've booked, um, all your documents will go to the app, like your boarding cards and, and things like that. Uh, and also, as you said, if you're booking for a group, uh, the rest of the group could log on to the app as a uh, to the account as a guest, and then pay their part of the deposit and then the balance further down the line. So. Yeah, it makes it much more simple. You've got it all sussed, haven't you, really? Especially with the uh, protection, the 100% protection. That's quite a big worry these days, isn't it, yeah, I think? definitely. I think and uh, if you go online and you book your um, flights and your accommodation and everything separate, then it won't be um, put, you know, at all protected. So mm. to get your money back is, is tricky. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks for popping in and telling us about Travel Counsellors. So once again, um, the website is travelcounsellors.co.uk forward slash emma.vipond and um, pop on there, scroll down, read the blogs, whatever. And um, hopefully, maybe you can come back in again at some point and tell us all about some more travel experiences that you've had, some more funny stories. That would be great. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> I could speak all day. <laughs> <laughs> okay thanks emma thank you we'll see you soon thanks cheers